I did not want to hate the remake of the classic, epic-defining anime, Cowboy Bebop, partly because hating live-action adaptations of acclaimed anime is very easy and pretty obvious. When you have a work that is so critically acclaimed and has such a passionate fan base, remaking it is always going to be a sort of trap. Especially when you consider the difficulties of going from animation, a much more versatile and malleable medium, to the restraints of live action. The bar is incredibly high to even make the remake seem worthwhile, and the odds of matching the original in terms of quality and impact are basically zero. Because of that, I knew that the chance of the Netflix adaptation of Cowboy Bebop meeting the expectations a lot of people had of it was very low. I wanted to try to be fair. I wanted to evaluate the show on its own terms. So I took some time and watched it and rewatched it and thought about, okay, if I were a newbie, if I did not know the original, how would I feel about watching this? Would it work for me then? And the answer I eventually came to was that I wouldn't care. There are a lot of mid-budget adventure sci-fi shows out there on Netflix right now that have the same quality writing and world building. Would this show stand out from those other shows? I don't think it would. To passionate fans of the original, like myself, the Netflix adaptation is appalling. It's cheap, cloying, and shallow. To the uninitiated, it's just another overlong Netflix sci-fi show. There is no reason to watch this remake. It is nothing but a pale, flaccid imitation of a much better work. Whether you are a newbie or a Cowboy Bebop veteran, there is absolutely no reason to watch this over the original except maybe novelty. Especially since the original is now on Netflix as well. Just go watch that instead. Now, many of the reasons the remake doesn't work are minor and quite boring. It's not a wild, incoherent butchering of the original. For the most part, the remake tries to stick very close to the original Cowboy Bebop. It is clear, if nothing else, that the people who made this show care deeply about the original and want to try and at least make a halfway decent product, an imitation of that original, but they don't have the spirit or the vision. The best comparison I can think of is that of a cover band playing a famous song written by some old music legend, and the cover is respectful. It's done out of the spirit of generosity and real love for the original. It's just not very good because the people performing do not understand why the original works. The action here is stiff. The dialogue is wooden. The vivid, vibrant cities and planets of the original are replaced by stock, unimaginative empty cyberpunk pastiche. There's no room for these silent, poetic pauses that encapsulate so much of the loneliness and contemplation of the original, really allowing those moments of longing to linger. But there are more obvious ways in which this remake is bad. And those mostly relate to two characters who have expanded roles in this remake, those being Julia, 
who I will reductively call Spike's love interest, and Vicious, the main antagonist. Now, if these additions were simply unnecessary and kind of silly, that would be bad enough. But they are more than inessential. They actively detract from the core and heart of the original. They take what worked pretty well, left abstract and implied in the original, and over-explain it to such an indulgent degree that what worked is lost, and the result is just new material that seems very thin and awkward when wedged amongst the classic beats the show tries desperately to hit. It's not a good sign for the show that its best moments come when it's flailing to imitate the original. Now, I doubt there were a lot of Cowboy Bebop fans who are clamoring for more vicious in the remake. Cowboy Bebop has very few weaknesses, but Vicious is arguably a weakness for the show. He's not a great character. He's basically the show's Sephiroth, this absurd, over-the-top villain with long, flowing silver hair and a giant sword. Still, I would argue he mostly works as a villain in the original, despite the absurdity of him as a character, because of how the show positions him. There is not a lot of Vicious in the original show. Mostly, he lingers in Spike's psyche. When he does appear, it's as this strange, unknowable eerie force of darkness and malice. He matters because of how he exists in relation to Spike, how he symbolizes and serves as a metaphor for Spike's fears and anxieties, how Spike has run away from his past and how that past is going to come back to greet him no matter how hard Spike tries to run from it. As a shadow haunting the subconscious of Spike, he's quite effective. So naturally, what the show does is strip out all that nuance, all that symbolic power, and just spend far too much time on Vicious the Man, who is far less interesting than Vicious the Symbol. We are treated to long and very dry sequences of him with the Red Dragon Syndicate. The Red Dragon Syndicate kind of exists as this pseudo-noir organized crime syndicate that exists in the background of the action, setting up a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress, but the original wisely knows that what's important is not the Syndicate itself, but the pressures the Syndicate exerts on the characters we actually care about. The internal Syndicate politics are not why anyone watched the original Cowboy Bebop. They're very thin and yet somehow hopelessly convoluted. So of course, the remake spends far too much time expanding on those politics, and expanding Vicious's role. There is nothing wrong with a little Vicious every now and then, but the show tries very desperately to make him an interesting character in his own right, giving him a tragic backstory and exploring Vicious's angst, but these attempts fail, and this is partly because the writing for the show overall is just kind of bad and sloppy, and just kind of superficial and surface level, but it's also because even with the detail they try to add, Vicious's role in the show still remains this histrionic, over-the-top, kind of overdramatic antagonist. These lukewarm attempts to expand his character do not make him more interesting. They just result 
in more time and more attention being spent on this histrionic villain who is hard to care about in his own right because there is not a lot that is exciting or enticing or intriguing about him. The show's rendition of Julia isn't much better. In the original show, Julia functions in much the same way as Daisy functions in The Great Gatsby, not just as a lost love, but also as a corollary for all the opportunities and dreams of a past life that will now never come to fruition. Spike is haunted not just by Julia the person, but by the life he believes he could have had with her. And when we actually see Julia in the original show, after so much time spent wondering about her and so much time seeing Spike yearn over her, we see she's quite different from what we expected. Spike doesn't really understand who she is. He's projected this ideal of Julia for his own sake. She's just an ordinary broken person like him and like everyone else in this world. And she's just trying to get by with her own sorrows and her own anxieties. The new show does not think that abstractly and that philosophically. Julia goes from being kind of a send-up or a critique of the whole femme fatale archetype to just basically being a femme fatale, stuck between the loves of Spike and Vicious, who again is not an interesting character in this version because they spend far too much time over explaining him and trying to give him false depth that just makes him look more shallow and empty as a character. Julia could be read as kind of a misogynist caricature in this version especially, but I wouldn't quite go that far. I just think it's kind of bad and inane writing that always takes the easy way out instead of taking time to think about why the original worked and all its ambiguity, its refusal to give firm and clear answers, and its meditation on how those broken pieces of ourselves, those longings, those old dreams, they will never fix themselves and they will never go away. The show is too simple to really offer a strong take on that. Everyone deserved better, but especially Vicious and Julia. So thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can and you want to see more videos like this. I did not expect this show to be great, and I certainly did not expect it to be as good as the original. But I thought it would at least manage a 60-70 on Metacritic. I'd gotten my hopes up that far. Sadly, it was not the case. It's still better than the Death Note adaptation, but I'll tell you a little secret. I don't really care much for Death Note, the animated show. It's good, it's fine, but it was never a favorite of mine in the same way that Cowboy Bebop is, so this bad adaptation is something that cuts a little more deeply for me. So I'll probably end up forgetting it pretty soon, and perhaps that's as damning as anything else I've said in this video. Anyway, tune in soon for my next analysis. It will be coming soon. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.